Good luck! I was pulled out to sea. We are attempting to survive on this deserted island in the middle of the South Pacific for 96 hours with no food, no water, and no shelter. And somehow, we've convinced Nate's 60-year-old parents to join us. In case you missed part one, during our first 40 hours, we've managed to start a fire with our homemade bow drill, build a pretty awesome shelter thanks to James's construction career, drink plenty of coconuts thanks to the new tool Nate invented, and Nate has caught everyone a fish to eat with with his homemade fishing reel. So far, it's going way better than our first survival attempt in Panama last year. I think it's a tarantula. Or just the biggest spider I've ever seen in my entire life. We're thriving in so many ways, but it hasn't been easy. How'd you sleep? Terrible. It grabbed my finger. Ugh. Even though limited calories, bad sleep, and lack of coffee are all dwindling our energy and motivation very quickly, for our last two days, we've committed to undertake a major construction project because our escape depends on it. Wow. What timing. Somehow, it didn't rain all night. Right. As it started to go wet outside, it started pouring. We didn't have to lay in soggy wet sleeping bags all night. Yeah. Another wow. night not getting eaten by rats, bats, or spiders. Or crap. So this was not part of the original plan, but the other day we found something laying up here on the beach that's given us an idea. Ready? One, two, three. Ah! What? What in the world? The netting is, is in the sand. Ah! Does this even float? So it's some kind of raft that's made out of bamboo, and there's some PVC pipes underneath this rope, and then it's all just held together by a massive net, and attached to it is this big plastic thing. If uh, anyone knows what this is, please let us know in the comments below. We probably walked a mile around the edge of the island before we found this. So now we gotta figure out how to get it back to our camp because it is heavy. It floats! Woohoo! Ah. Nate sacrificed for all of us. Stripped down to his underwear, got in the water and started pulling our raft. Didn't say a word, just started doing it. It's not quite as cold as I thought it would be. Unfortunately, when I was pushing this from behind and kind of leaning on it, I realized it's maybe not, uh, not quite as buoyant as we had all hoped. So I think we're gonna have to do a lot of work to this raft before it's gonna carry any of us. Well, that wasn't quite as hard as I expected. You're looking skinny. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> What are you trying to say? That little island walk we just did really took it out of me. Could really use a coffee right now. Or food, or water. I feel way better than I did this morning. I woke up with no energy. So far we've sustained by just eating one fish every night, but I think we're all feeling a little extra hungry. All right, this is gonna be our first time eating anything besides coconut and fish in the last 48 hours. I don't think that's edible. Oh wow, <laughs> that's actually so good. Oh my gosh. That might be the best thing that I've put in my mouth since we've been on this island. I feel like this one bite is gonna give me energy. Now, how do you catch crabs? With it, with it too, my <laughs> <laughs> Nice work. All mm. right, we are thriving. <laughs> Great harvest, James! Bringing in the crabs and the green beans! Hey, baby. So there are these beautiful green vines growing all over the beach here, and they produce these pretty purple flowers and green bean pods. They are so tasty. It kind of tastes like a edamame, like Maybe a little bit nuttier. We learned in our training that eating too many of these could be a little dangerous. And frankly, the fact that none of you are vomiting or diarrheal right now, I find very alarming. Mm. 
So satisfying. How do I look? Great. Nice and fresh. Beautiful. How's my hat? I'm really feeling the crab and green bean energy, so I'm gonna use it to show you around our camp. Starting up here, we have this beautiful coastal view. This is our coconut chopping station. Once we realized there were rats on the island, we decided to keep these as far away from where we're living as possible, especially where we're sleeping, because we don't want to be woken up by rats. So Nate comes out here with his machete and pew, 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 cuts open our coconuts for us. It's pretty funny how it's only day three and we already have such a routine here. Everything is so established and like we didn't really plan it that way. It just kind of happened. Like this is the table where we put our shells and our toilet paper. <laughs> it's better when they're fresh. These are getting a bit crumbly. You might not want to use this as toilet paper. Yeah, it's better when they're like this. Here we have our, what I would call like the living room with the fireplace. <laughs> it's where we spend majority of our time. The idea was this huge epic log would be a great bench or a great backrest, but the wind is typically blowing this way and all you get is smoke to the face. So that one was kind of a fail. But here is what I'm calling our garage area. It's just kind of all of the supplies that we need throughout the day. We have some firewood, some extra palm leaves if we need them, random things that we find on the beach that we think will be useful. Home Depot is that way in the woods. <laughs> Most of our supplies for the garage comes from there. <laughs> I think I'm delirious. And one of my favorite parts of our whole camp our shelter! James and Christy probably did the most heavy lifting, literally, physically, emotionally, but it has turned out so beautiful and it's decently waterproof. It's rained a few times and we've stayed dry under there. This is the restroom area. You might see there are some trees that are called walking palms. They're very masculine looking. So it's very fitting that they're our bathroom. I always use one of those to go behind because it's private. So to be clear, it's just, you just go in the woods. Earlier today, Christy had the genius idea to use some of the netting from the raft we found to make what could be the highlight of our camp. We are all up to here with sitting on the ground with no backrest. It works! Woohoo! It's, uh, <laughs> it's very wet. I don't think anyone wants to lay down in this right now, but soon we will test this out. We have a hammock! I cannot believe we have a hammock. It's gonna be amazing. Woo! At this point, we are probably having vivid dreams about food, which makes Viator sponsoring this video very appropriate because food tours are one of our favorite ways to explore new cities all around the world and Viator is the best place to book these tours. We first discovered food tours back in Poland in 2016 and we have been hooked ever since. Food tours are the way to go. We like to schedule our food tours early in the trip because it's a great way to try a bunch of different things and then you can go back and eat more of the things that you enjoyed the most. Plus, we always ask our local guide for recommendations and we have found some great hidden gems this way. Mm. And if you find yourself in India where it feels like there's over 10,000 street food vendors, it can be pretty overwhelming trying to choose the best ones to eat at, and a local guide is a game changer. With Viator being the world's largest experience marketplace and having over 300,000 bookable tours in cities all across the world, it has become our go-to resource for finding food tours. But Viator has way more than just food. They have everything from city bike tours to way more extreme adventures like trekking in Patagonia and everything in between. Finding a tour on Viator is super easy. All you need to do is just search for or whatever you want to do in a city. In this example, we're looking for food tours in Paris. Then we select our travel dates. And finally, we like to filter by traveler rating to make sure we're getting the highest rated tours because there is nothing worse than spending your vacation on a bad tour. Click the link below to visit Viator.com and check out their wide range of experiences for your next trip. Island of Eden. Because it's so plentiful here. We have everything we need. Nice job on the sign. Thank you. Chrissy took a coconut bowl, filled it with ash, and mashed it all up, and then added some seawater to it and stirred it, and painted it onto this piece of wood that we found using nature's paintbrush. This thing. It's also the best way to get sand off your feet before getting in the sleeping bag. 
Hey! Woo! The phrase low hanging fruit has never had a more literal meaning in my life. You know, it means like do the easy stuff first. This is like literally get the low hanging fruit because it's the easiest. All right, the hammock's dry-ish. So I'm the one that tied it up. I feel like I should be the one to test it out. Not in like a selfish, I get to lay in it first, but just as in a, <laughs> if it collapses to the ground, it should be me. I think it's gonna work. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh my goodness, we might as well be rescued. <laughs> Nay. Somebody can definitely sleep in this thing. I wish I could send the energy of this through the camera to you <laughs> for how big of a game changer this is. Just having one comfortable spot to relax. Survival does not get much better than this. Oh. Wow. My body is so happy right now. And the birds are chirping. Hi, Bluey, we're excited too. We have a mascot, by the way. <laughs> His name is Bluey because he has beautiful blue wings. He comes and visits every single day and follows us around. It's a very curious little birdie. Nate's going fishing in his underwear. I'm going to wash our noni leaves off. This is going to become our nightly routine. It's raining. Life is good here on the island of Eden. We have our crab appetizers cooking. The fish have just gone on the coals. This is going to be our first night eating more than just one fish a piece. Even though the crabs are small, they will be savored. I would say today and day one have by far been our best days. Yesterday was a bit of a struggle. I feel like everybody's kind of hitting their groove today. The first day was just filled with pure adrenaline and excitement. Thanks for looking up. I really genuinely feel like we could just survive in this state for a very long time, assuming we don't run out of coconuts. Man, I just had a whole filet come out of one of them. Nice. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't nothing but a big piece of meat. Have a good night, three sleep. I hope it's somewhere tonight too and not tonight one. How the bag lady sleep? Not bad. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Mm. I don't think I'm gonna sleep as soundly tonight. Should I just flick it? My mom found a scorpion on her sleeping bag. Honestly, didn't even know those were out here. Good news is, we only have one more night. We just have to get lucky one more time. Satisfying as coffee. This is as far as I made it. Taking that coconut took all my energy. I'm not going crazy. Uh, the things that have become normal out here. Anytime one of us go walking into the woods, say to use the bathroom, 
we always take a stick and move it in front of us because otherwise you just walk into a hundred spider webs with your face. <laughs> at some point I really started getting a kick out of the fact that it's become normal for us just to look like crazy people and wave sticks in front of our face as we walk. Since it's day four, I thought I would share my morning routine with you. After Nate brings me a coconut in bed, I typically try to eat some of the coconut after I drink it, but I just, I just can't do it anymore. Next, I go to the hibiscus tree and chop off a little branch to brush my teeth with. Doesn't actually taste like I've brushed my teeth, but it feels much better. Then I walk down to the sea and splash my face with the ocean water. Bonus points if it's sunny outside. And then it's time for whatever's on the to-do list. Okay, the main goal for today is to get this raft finished. We have eight hours of daylight to make our escape raft. We just kind of pulled it up on the beach and forgot about it yesterday, but today it's time to get to work. So we have scavenged the beach for as much floaty stuff as we could possibly find. We found a couple of these PVC tubes, a bunch of fisherman floaties, and also a huge blue rope that we're gonna be using for the cordage. And the plan is basically to stuff as many floaty things inside the netting of the raft as possible on the bottom side. And then we've also cut down a bunch of driftwood and some trees out of the forest and we're gonna build a platform on top. And we'll use the rotten blue rope to tie it all together. So that's a game plan. Are these not the biggest coconuts you've ever seen? We decided we didn't have enough floaty stuff for the bottom, so we're also gonna stuff some brown coconuts in there. Years and years of preparation have led to this moment. You may not grow a palm tree, but you will float the raft. All right, the floaty stuff is going in. It'll actually be good, we'll need to pour a whole floor on the top. So this is what the bottom of the raft looks like multiple PVC tubes, some random floaties, some big dry coconuts, some styrofoam, and hopefully that's enough to float. Ugh. Ooh, that's heavy. Ooh, that made me a little dizzy. As hard as this has been for me and for all of us, I caught myself talking to Nate earlier today and saying, next time, So in between our big projects, when we're feeling low on energy, we typically sit around and make cordage, which is hibiscus tree bark. You strip it and it kind of looks like a little string and you twist it and flip it. Something I don't do very often in my normal life, just sit and tinker with something. I can just already feel how grateful I am for every little thing in life when we get back from this. So my mom found this gigantic turquoise rope laying on the beach and we figured out it's like four or five different ropes woven together so in order to get more cordage out of it we're unwrapping it all right back at it just needed a nap and a coconut all right, the top of the raft is coming along. Now that I look at it here in the camera, it doesn't look like much, but we've got a little platform built, and now we've got to figure out how to attach that platform and then also tie on all the fishing floats that we've found to hopefully make it buoyant. Right, it's already 1.30, and I'm hitting what I've been calling my first wind. Don't really have any energy in the mornings, but then I just took a little nap. I'm feeling pretty good. Christy just gave me a tattoo. I'm ready to get some work done. James and Christy had so much energy yesterday that Nate and I were positive that they snuck candy and have been eating in private. They're holding up great. I think I'm the sleepiest of everyone. It's not even sleepy, I'm just like the, the weakest link. Please don't eat me. The buoys make it look very rafty. Oh, it's gonna look rafty. Hope for the best. <laughs> All right, we're gonna see if we can get it back in the water. Ugh. Nice, it's off. The initial float test. <laughs> it works. It's actually working way better than I thought it would. The raft is really heavy, so instead of pulling it up on the rocks and then having to pull it all the way back down into the water in the morning, they're gonna drag it all the way to the beach, and hopefully we can just drag it straight into the ocean to leave first thing in the morning. Oh, 
All right, we just put the finishing touches on the raft and our escape is planned for tomorrow morning. So now, time to get to fishing. I think my country accent's coming out. <laughs> time to get to fishing. Dinner! This might be the best fish dinner yet. It's amazing how natural this is becoming after four days. I feel like I've almost gotten as good as the coconut vendors that you buy from, where they're just like pop, 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 pop. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Our final night. I haven't oh. got tired of that. It's a good one. It doesn't get much better than this. Good night. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa! saw the best well breach ever. Oh, I was about to say I'm God. not sure how it gets any better than this, and that's how. It was so close! Two of them. Look, there goes there. a baby. Oh, there's the tail. Ah. There goes another one. What is happening right now? They're liking this sunset. <laughs> they are. They're just as excited as we are. We're watching an incredible sunset. We have four fish on the fire. We have enough coconuts to last us until tomorrow morning. Oh. We've pretty much done it. I, take notes uh. I can't wait for this to be over, but I'm kind of sad it's over at the same time. I kid you not. Just when I think it can't get better, there's a random rainbow in the sky. A double random rainbow. Double rainbow. Oh my god. Throw it in. One last fish dinner. I will say mm. I have very much come to look forward to this moment in the day. I wasn't a huge fan the first day of my fish. A little fishy if I'm being honest. Now, mm -hmm. I feel like it's the best tasting thing in the world. <laughs> fish is amazing! Hunger is the best sauce. Wow, what a sunset with that whale breach out there. That was such good timing. We did it. We did it. We did it. We're escaping today. We made it through. Mm -hmm. Our last night. I am so looking forward to sleeping without mosquitoes buzzing in my ears. Without having a buff over my face. And I'd be okay with just like a half inch of padding. I'm not even asking for a whole bed. I smell so bad. Get me off this island. can't believe we're already taking it down. In a way, it feels like we've been out here forever, and in a way, it feels like it was just yesterday. Wow, that's Beautiful it. Beautiful hammock. Messenger. Gonna sail away. We're gonna leave the rope dangling. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you okay? Bye, Kara! Bye! Open help! Hang in there! Goodbye. Good luck! Yeah, you're going that way, but you're supposed to be going that way. I can't reach the bottom anymore. Oh my gosh. We actually did it. Four whole.
whole days with Nate's parents on a deserted island with no food, no water, no shelter. We started completely from scratch and I'd say that we thrived. And now we have unlocked what we call the gratitude reset, where everything in our normal life has now become extraordinary again. All the simple things like running water, endless amounts of food, coffee, buildings with roofs on them, chairs with a back. It's all gonna be so good and I can't wait! Well, we're all stuck here. I'm sorry I failed. <laughs> You gotta survive a little longer, I guess. Well, we have learned two things this week. One, we're capable of surviving on a deserted island. And two, we're capable of building a raft that floats, just not one that we can steer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. That had to be the last of your energy. Thanks, work. <laughs> your coconut bra is kind of. Excuse me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, I love you. Ah, you're so cold. We did it. Nice work. Proud of y'all. Tara, so you're the woman. You tried to save us. Tried. <laughs> Any last words? Bon voyage. Are you glad you did it? Oh yeah. Yes. It was a great experience. It was hard, but it was fun too. Same. <laughs> Before we go, we want to say thank you to our friend Tom at Desert Island Survival for organizing another incredible survival challenge. The great thing about doing it here in Tonga is that this is the best place in the world to swim with humpback whales. So within hours of leaving the island, we were swimming in the water with this super playful baby humpback. There will be way more whale content in next week's video. See you then. You owe me big time. <laughs>